I can't hold all of these RS3s. <laughs> Hey guys, it's not Phil and it's not Jules either. It's Jesse. We're going to be talking about the RS3 MV5 today. So I think this is the 15th or 20th Moyu cube in the last like year or so. This is basically the follow up to the RS3 Super V2, which was a pretty solid cube. The main problem was that it seemed overpriced. It didn't really seem to have a place in Moyu's lineup. So the price for these cubes seems to be much, much more reasonable. So I'll go through it real quick. As you can see, there are five versions, but it's actually not that complicated. It's just that three of the versions come with the Moyu robot cube stand, and then two of them don't come with the stand. So starting out, the cheapest one is a standard non-spring compression version for $9. It's just a screw and spring. It doesn't have the dual compression adjustment. So then for $10, you get the same cube, but with the dual adjustment system that we've had since the GTS-3. So this version is just the dual adjustment system along with the robot. So this one is 13. Then you have the maglev version with the robot. And this one is $16. And then the actual good one, which is the Ballcore UV coated best one. This one is $25. So this is a much more reasonably priced cube than the Super V2 was. It's much more in line with the original Super with that Ballcore version being, I think, $20. And that didn't have UV coating and everything else. So I think this is actually really good pricing for this cube. And yeah, we'll see how the cube performs. So I've already got one out of the box here. So this is what the cube looks like. On the outside, it looks quite similar to a V9. And when you open it up, you've got the dragon scale pattern on the corners. You've got the turquoise internals. So I'll show you some turning here. My first impression is that the cube is really, really light. It just has a super light, airy kind of feeling. It's also really quite fast. Something I am noticing is that the cube is really tight. I think this is just how it is out of the box though, so surely it can make this feel a bit better, but the corner cutting does feel quite harsh. So as you can see, it's it's actually barely cutting line to line, not even 45 degrees, and it is really, really uh, aggressive. While the cube is turning nicely, I get the feeling that if I start losing some precision, the cube will not help me out at all. It's just gonna lock up. So that is something that I do want to address with setup. I think what I wanna do is loosen the cube a bit and then compress it. I'm also curious how the spring diversion will feel because maglev does seem to kind of make the cube feel more snappy or the corner cutting doesn't seem as gracious. So I'm curious if putting springs in it would make it any better. So yeah, we're gonna go a little out of order. Now that I've shown you the cube, I wanna go through and look at the unboxing experience here. We'll start with this most basic one here. So yeah, this one's real simple. It just comes with a stand and a screwdriver. So this one feels even lighter than the ball core one, of course. But yeah, this cube, wow. It really kind of, it feels like a GAN cube, honestly. And honestly, it's, it's still really good. I'd say this one is faster and feels a bit more stable, which is what you'd expect from having maglev and a ball core. But this one is still like, it doesn't feel bad. It still feels quite stable and good. My main complaint is really just the matte finish, which will eventually wear off. And if you take the cap off, you get a sight that I haven't seen since like 2017. It's just a screw and nothing else. Uh, it's pretty amazing to see that from a cube in 2023. But yeah, honestly, for a starter cube as a gift, anything like that, this is like an insanely good cube for $8. Honestly, out of the box, it's very easy to recommend this over the $8 RS3M 2020. The main thing that $8 RS3M 2020 has that this doesn't is an adjustment system, but you only have to pay $1 more for that, which you get in this cube. This one does come with the compression tool, which is good. So yeah, here we go. This one's got actually a little more crunch to it, and it looks like they're all tensioned very similarly. These are all really tight out of the box. So yeah, this one just has the same old Moyu dual adjustment system. Very nice. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Maglev one. That's the only one we haven't seen yet. Oh wow, okay. Never actually seen one of these little robots, so this is cool. 
Yeah, this is, this is fun. I like this. The only problem I have with it is basically just that if you want the maglev or ball core UV version, you basically have to pay extra for the stand. Like I'm assuming that it would be a couple dollars cheaper to just sell the cube on its own without the stand, like for the other two versions, but it is what it is. At least it's still cheaper than the, uh, the Super V2. So anyway, so this is the maglev version, which has purple internals. This is just, you know, classic maglev feel. It's faster, it's got less friction, and because it's like super dry right now, it is real quick. You can get these U4s going pretty easily, which you definitely, well, you can still sort of do it. It's definitely easier on the maglev though. So yeah, these are the four versions of the cube pretty much. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at the pieces. So here is a corner and edge. Let's go ahead and compare it to the previous RS cube, the Super V2. Now the Super V2 had a capped design, which was actually kind of bad because it was very common when you try to take the piece out that the caps would just pop off and the piece would stay inside the cube. So I'm glad they went back to this design. But yeah, the edge base is a bit longer on the V5 here. And of course there's no edge magnet. And then the corner piece really feels very similar. This corner base kind of flares out a little bit as you can see, and the magnet is not quite as recessed. It comes up a little bit closer to the core. And then just looking at the core of these cubes in the center, the center looks identical, honestly. Yeah, overall, it's fairly minor changes, but it can still make a big difference. Like this V5, it feels distinct from the uh, the Super V2. Man, these names are getting confusing. So let's actually, let's figure this out. There is the RS3 2020, there's the RS3 2021, which is the same cube, but with maglev. Then there's the RS3 Super, then there's the RS3 Super V2, and now the V5. So they're counting the 2021 maglev as a completely separate cube. I'm not sure if that totally works the same way as like the Waylong V9, but whatever, I'll, uh, I'll give it to them. So what I wanna do now is do a little bit of setup to this cube. So I want to loosen the cube and see if that improves the corner cutting at all, and then maybe compress it a bit if it starts feeling too loose. Okay, so we're gonna go one quarter turn on each side. That does feel better, but now the cube feels like this kind of clacky. So I think the tensions are good. I'm gonna put it on like mid compression. So like setting four. Okay, I'm, I'm liking the way that feels. It still feels quite snappy. I have a feeling that that's just kind of like an intrinsic part of the cube, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to make that fully go away. The main thing now is that it's just really fast and kind of dry. So I'm gonna put in two of my favorite lubes, which is just Mystic and FC Calm. So just a bit of Mystic. All right, it's, yeah, the Mystic is definitely kind of softening up the feel of the cube and slowing it down a little bit, which is good. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of Calm in there too. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, it's feeling real like buttery smooth now. Okay, so I'm really liking how the cube is feeling at this point. I think I might loosen up on the compression just a little bit. I'm actually gonna do that right now. Okay, so I was at four clicks with the compression. I just put it back to two and that feels a lot more reasonable. The cube feels a little more flexy now, a little bit more unstable, but I think it feels pretty good actually. So I'm gonna do some solves on it and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so I've done a good amount of solves on the cube now and the cube really does perform well. Like I was solving quite well on it. There are no major glaring issues sticking out to me right now. The cube doesn't pop or corner twist or anything like that. In fact, it's very, very stable. The problem I'm having is basically what I was talking about earlier. The cube feels very snappy when it corner cuts. So if your turning isn't precise, you can kind of feel it fighting against you. It's not that bad. It's not terribly locky. The cube isn't like flying out of my hands, but I did just notice that I was 
bit hesitant to really kind of speed up my turning during certain algs because I could feel that the cube was just resisting me a bit. But the feel of the cube is really good. It feels really polished. Once it's been lubed, it's really, really buttery smooth and quiet. It's not too fast. The magnets don't feel too strong. Like it's overall a really solid cube. And I'm really glad that Moyu came out with it because the Super V2 just felt so out of place in their lineup with the ball core version of that cube being more expensive than their flagship cube, the Weilong V9. So I think this cube, it actually really does feel very similar to the Super V2, but I think it improves on some of the things that I think were an issue with that cube. The main thing I'm thinking of is just the caps. Like the caps coming off when you try to take a piece out on this cube was really frustrating. No longer a problem on this. And the price, it's like half the price, $25 for a really good UV coated ball core cube. That's a really good deal, honestly. I do think the robot thing is kind of gimmicky. Like I wish they just sold the cube with no other accessories, like just, the cube, but it's honestly a nitpick. Uh, I just, again, we've gone over this many times, but I don't like how confusing Moyu has made it to pick the right version of the cube. But if you know what you're looking for, I don't think it's that bad. You've got a standard maglev and ball core. That's pretty normal at this point. The only thing they're really throwing in here is like a base cube that doesn't have dual adjustment. I don't really think that's necessary, but whatever. But just wrapping up my thoughts on the cube itself, it's really good. I think it's much more worth it to get this cube over the Super V2. I don't think it's better than the Waylog V9. I don't know how it stacks up to other flagships like the Tornado V3 and the GAN 12 and stuff like that. Initially, I would say it's not better than those cubes also, but of the RS cubes, I think this is probably the best one right now. The only one I think could be better is the Super V1. That one is still a really good cube, but at this point, it's already lacking some features that are pretty commonplace in cubes like UV coating. And while I do have very fond memories of it, when I pick it up and turn it now, I do realize that it is quite a blocky cube and you have to do a lot of work on it and a lot of break in for it to really start feeling good. This cube is honestly really good and usable right out of the box, which is really good for a Moyu cube. So for right now, it seems like this is a really easy cube to recommend. It's really quite good out of the box and I'm really liking it. Definitely stick around though. We will be doing an everyone solves video to get everyone opinions. After all, I'm just someone from nowhere. But until then, the link for all five versions of this cube will be in the description if you want to check it out. Anyways, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.